On this video we're going to create the lasers and make the ship shoot. To achieve that first, we will create the flare scene. After that, we will make a parent or base scene for both the ship's and the enemy's laser. Then the ship's laser itself. And finally, we're going to make the ship shoot. So for the flare, we're going to create a new scene. Let's add a sprite node. Rename it Fleur. And for X texture, I'll assign the Fleur sprite. Hit Ctrl S to save it in the scenes folder as Fleur.tscn. Now, when a Fleur is spawned, it quickly fades out and then gets destroyed. So, for the fading, I'm going to add an animation player node. I'll rename it Anim and let's create a new animation name Fade Out. Up time 0 for the Flare node for the opacity property. I'm going to add a key with a value of 1. Hit Create to make a new track for the property and at time 0 0.1 we're going to add a key with a value of 0. Let's set the length to 0.1 seconds and we have the animation looking like so. We won't be dealing with animations for now, so I'll close this panel. Let's add the script and save it in the scripts folder as flurl.gd. Hit create. I remove the comments and on the ready function we're going to get the anim node and play the animation fade out. After that we'll wait until the anim node emits the signal finished and then we'll call the function q3 so this node gets destroyed once it has faded out. Now that we have the flur, we can create the laser scene that we will be using as a base node for our two concrete lasers. So let's make a new scene. And since a laser needs to be detected in collision, I'll add an area to the node. Rename it laser. And save it in the scenes folder as laser.tscn. Let's add a sprite node. Rename it sprite. And I won't assign a texture to it since it will get overridden by the scenes that will inherit this scene. We'll also need a collision shape 2D, so let's add it too. Rename it shape. And I want to assign a shape for the same reason. Now both lasers will get destroyed once they are out of the screen. Either by going to the top or to the bottom. And for that we're going to be using the visibility notifier node. Which detects when the node is visible on the screen and what is not. I'm going to rename it this notifier. And we need to define a rectangle but we'll be looking into that later. Let's add a script and save it in the scripts folder as laser.gd. Hit create. I remove the comments. And on this script we'll do three main things. Apply a velocity, instantiate a flare, and self-destroy when out of screen. Let's go first for the velocity. I'm going to create a member variable named Velocity with the sport keyword so we can edit it from the inspector. Let's enable the process callback and create it down here. And in here we're going to translate this node by an offset of Velocity by Delta. That's it for the Velocity. Now to instantiate a flare we're going to declare a constant name SCM equals to preload 
passing the path of the flare scene. Let's make a function name creates flare. And in here, we're going to declare a flare variable equals to scmflare.instance. Then, we'll set the first position to the laser's position. And finally, we're going to add it in the main node of the current scene by saying utils.mainnode.atchildflare. And by adding it into the main node, we avoid the flare's position to be relative to another node. Let's call the function create flare on ready. That's it for the flare. To self destroy when out of view, on the ready function, we're going to yield or wait until the vis notifier node emits the signal SC screen. And then we're going to destroy this node. And that is all we will be doing on this script. We can now create the laser ship itself. So let's create a new inherent scene with laser as a base scene. I'm going to rename this node laser ship and save it in the scenes folder as laser ship.tscn. On the sprite node, I'm going to assign the laser ship sprite. On the shape, let's assign a new rectangle shape and set its dimension to 3 by 6. And on the visibility notifier, the rectangle size will be 6 by 12. And so it's not so offset, its position will be minus 3 minus 6. And since we want this laser to go up, I'm going to set its vertical velocity to minus 350. Let's place it somewhere here and give it a shot. And there we have it. And to make sure that the laser is getting destroyed, we can go to the debugger, then to remote inspector, and indeed the laser ship is not there. I'm going to stop the game and hit Ctrl Z to place the laser back to the origin. Let's now make the ship shoot this laser. So I'll go ahead and open up the ship scene. And because this ship has two cannons, the lasers are gonna be coming out from both sides. So to know the position they should be coming out from, I'm going to add an O2D. Name it cannons. And as a child of it, add a position to the node. Rename it left. And let's set its position to minus 12, minus 8. So we have it right here. I'm going to duplicate this node, rename it right, and set its horizontal position to 12. So it is on the other side. Let's go to the chip script, and I'm going to declare a constant name, SCN laser equals to preload with the path of the laser chip scene. Let's create a function name create laser with pause as a parameter, since we will be creating them in different positions. I will declare a laser variable and set it to scn laser dot instance. Then set its position to the pause variable and finally Add it as a child of the main node. Let's make another function below this one named shoot. And here we're going to get the global position of the left cannon and save it into a variable, which we can call post left. And the same for the right. Then we will call the create laser function twice, passing post left on one and post right on the other one. Let's call shoot on ready to see if it works. And when running the ship scene, the laser's position are relative to the ship because the ship is the main node. But if we run the game, the lasers don't get added to the main node because by the time the chips create them, 
The main node is still busy creating its other child nodes. So what I'll do is make it wait half a second before calling the function shoot using yield and the util script. And this isn't a workaround because we don't actually want the chip to start shooting right away. Let's give it a shot. And there we have it. And finally, to make the ship shoot endlessly, we will place this block of code into an infinite while loop, making it wait 0 0.25 seconds between each interaction. Let's try it out. And there we have it. Well guys, that's gonna be it for this video. Hope you have learned from it. And if you would like to support me so I can keep making more videos like this, you can do so by supporting me on Patreon. Thanks to all of you that have been doing it so far, and I'll see you on the next one.